Adventures of Ellen White and the Pioneers. Travelling the Narrow Way In 1844, when Ellen Harmon had her very first vision, she saw a narrow pathway to heaven. Only the people who kept their eyes fixed on Jesus were safe. Some grew tired and complained that the city was a great way off, and so they became discouraged and they gave up. And some lost sight of Jesus and said it was not God who had led them. In 1868, Sister White had a very impressive dream, not a vision this time, but a dream. She dreamed of being with a large body of people. A part of this group started out on their way, preparing to begin the journey. They had heavily loaded wagons. Let us think of the things that we would put in our wagon. Perhaps we would put our TV or computer, maybe toys, clothing, food, and what else I wonder. Matthew 6 verse 21 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Would you be sure that you had your Bible with you? As they journeyed, the road seemed to ascend. And on one side of the road was a very steep precipice. On the other side was a high, smooth, white wall. As they journeyed on, the road grew narrower and steeper. In some places it seemed so very narrow that they concluded they could no longer travel with the loaded wagons. And so they made a decision to loose them from the horses and just take a portion of the luggage from the wagons and place it upon the horses and continue the journey on horseback. As they progressed, the path still continued to grow narrower and they needed to press close to the wall to save themselves from falling off the narrow road down that steep precipice drop. As they did this, the luggage on the horses pressed against the wall and caused them to sway towards the precipice. They feared that they should fall and be dashed on the rocks. So they then cut the luggage off from the horses and let it fall over the precipice. How will it be with us when we have to leave everything behind? We will have to have the Bible hidden in our hearts at that time. They continued on horseback, greatly fearing that they should lose their balance and fall as they came to the narrower places in the road. At such times, a hand seemed to take the bridle and guide them over the dangerous, perilous way. And as the path grew more narrow, they decided that they could no longer go on with safety on horseback. And so they left the horses and they went on foot, in single file, one after the other, following in the footsteps of the other. And at this point, small cords were let down from the top of the pure white wall. These they eagerly grasped to help them in keeping their balance upon the path. And as they travelled, the cords moved along with them. The path finally became so narrow that they concluded they could travel more safely without their shoes. And so they slipped them from their feet and went on some distance without them. Soon it was decided they could travel more safely without their stockings, and they were removed too and they journeyed on, without socks, but with bare feet. Then they thought of those people who had not accustomed themselves to hardships and doing without things in their life. Where were those people now? They were not in the group anymore. At every change and trial, some people were left behind, and only those remained who had accustomed themselves during their life to endure hardship and be used to doing without. The struggles and trials of the way only made them more eager to press on to the end. The danger of falling from the pathway increased and they pressed close to the white wall 
yet could not place their feet fully on the path any more, for it was too narrow. They then suspended nearly their whole weight upon the cords, exclaiming, We have hold from above, we have hold from above. The same words were uttered by all the company in the narrow pathway. As they heard the sounds coming from below, they shuddered. They were teasing sounds and unkind songs. They heard strange music and loud laughter mixed with cries and wailing. And they became more anxious than ever to keep upon the narrow, difficult pathway. Much of the time they were compelled to suspend their whole weight upon the cords, which increased in size as they progressed. Mrs. White noticed that the beautiful white wall was stained with blood. It caused a feeling of regret to see the wall stained. This feeling, however, lasted just for a moment, as they soon thought that this was all just as it should be. Those who are following after will know that others have passed the narrow, difficult way before them, and they will conclude that if others were able to pursue their onward course, then they could do the same and keep going. And as they see the blood upon the wall, they will know that others have endured the same pain and difficulty. At last they came to a large chasm at which their path ended. There was nothing now to guide their feet, nothing upon which to rest them, and their whole reliance must be upon the cords which had increased inside until they were as large as their bodies. Here they were for a time thrown into perplexity and distress, and they inquired in fearful whispers, What is holding the cord? To what is the cord attached? Elder White was just ahead of Mrs. White. Large drops of sweat were falling from his brow, and the veins in his back and temples were increased to double their usual size, and quiet, agonizing groans came from his lips. The sweat was dropping from Mrs. White's face, and she felt such anguish as she had never felt before. A fearful struggle was before her. Should they fail here, all the difficulties of their journey had been experienced for nothing. Before them, on the other side of the chasm, was a beautiful field of green grass, about six inches high. They could not see the sun, but bright soft beams of light, resembling fine gold and silver, were resting upon this beautiful field. Nothing they had seen upon the earth could compare in beauty and glory with this field. But could they succeed in reaching it, was their anxious inquiry. Should the cord break, they might perish. Again, in whispered anguish, the words were breathed, What holds the cord? For a moment they hesitated to venture forward, and then they exclaimed, Our only hope is to trust wholly to the cord. It has been our dependence all the difficult way, and it will not fail us now. Still, they were hesitating, and they were distressed. These words were then spoken to them. God holds the cord. They need not fear. These words were then repeated by those behind, accompanied with, He will not fail us now. God holds the cord. He will not fail us. He has brought us thus far in safety. Elder White then swung himself over the big, fearful abyss into the beautiful field beyond. And Mrs. White immediately followed. And oh, what a sense of relief and gratitude to God they felt. Mrs. White heard voices raised in joyful, triumphant praise to God. And she was happy, perfectly happy. Mrs. White awoke from her dream and found that from the anxiety she had experienced in passing over the difficult route, every nerve in her body seemed to be shaking and in a tremor. 
This dream made such an impression upon her mind that she said every item in it would be vivid before her while her memory should continue. What carried these people safely to the promised land? It was only their faith. Before Jesus went back to earth, he asked the question, When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Do we see many people who have faith in God today? No, not many. In fact, many people are worshipping a false God, and many even do not believe in God at all, and even say there's no God. They do not have faith to believe Jesus is coming again. But we know Jesus is coming because we read his promise in John 14 verse 2. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Yes, Jesus will come, and take us to the city that Elder and Mrs. White were travelling towards in this impressive dream that she had. But we must stay close to Jesus, stay close in our relationship with him, and also be willing to give up and leave behind all the things of the world that will not fit us for heaven. In the next episode, you'll hear about our Adventist pioneers for one last time. But don't be sad, dear children, for our Lord Jesus will give us some good ideas and we will make some other videos and stories for you. Maybe he'll give you an idea. If you have an idea that you would like to tell us about, then you can write an email message to us at frenzymaranathamedia at yahoo.com.